Hi everybody and welcome to Blockbench in my Android device. What I'm going to be doing today is to show you how to edit and change and set up your Entity Wizard plugin creations inside of Minecraft on your phone as well. When we play on our phone we use Bedrock slash Pocket Edition Minecraft and when we use Entity Wizard we get this problem that we cannot get the files straight from the Entity Wizard into our game. We actually need to do some things on our device to move the files there. So right now I'm just preparing a very simple basic package. I'm taking a creeper. I will keep the same behavior. I'm not going to change anything, but I will make a custom spawn egg so we can see that the file actually converts into our game files. I'm just going to name this package test and then fill in my name as the pack author. This is up to you pretty much what you want to do. But from here on, we're going to be using a lot of different programs to get the files into the right location. As you notice now on export, I get a test.mc addon.zip directory. And I want to use this directory through something like C Archiver, like I'm going to do here, to open it up and take a look at the files within the actual archive itself. So I get two files. I get test behavior and I get test resources. These two folders contain all of the files that you would normally have in a resource pack and a behavior pack with inside of Minecraft for Bedrock Edition or Pocket Edition. But what I'm going to do next is to take a look at what these files look like. You could use a custom JSON program like Genie. This will allow you to browse the contents of the file and also get to know it a little bit better. Now you may notice and recognize that this is not a typical type of coding editor. Regular coding editor would allow us to see all of the code component. But this is pretty nice because it gives us blocks to use. And when I say blocks, I mean like code blocks. The amount of code that assesses a certain event or a certain behavior or function within your script. Now I'm going to be opening up the next file and this is the actual behavior file for our custom creeper mob that we put into the game. This contains a lot of different settings and here you can change literally anything about this mob. You can see here is it spawnable, is it summonable and so forth. You can also change the damage components, all of the different events that affects the actual mob within the game. Should it explode for example? What does it get damaged by? Does it get chased by things? Does it chase things? What type of aggression does it have? You can also look at things like speed and priority here, for example. How fast does it move? This also affects animation speed if you have a driver for that. And there's a lot of different things we can change throughout this file. This is the file that you want to edit things within. But you can find more information about that over at bedrock.dev. Now, I'm going to take a look at the model.json. And to get to that one, we go through the resource pack. We go into the models folder. You will see me accidentally clicking on Entity here, but we go into the Models folder. There we go. Inside of Entity, we find a test.jo.json. Now, I want to open this one up, but by default, my phone wants to open it with JSON Genie because it is a JSON file. But we want to edit the model. We don't want to look at it in code. So we're going to try to open it with a different software by clicking the arrow to the right. As you'll notice as I'm browsing through all of the different applications here, there is nothing called Blockbench. We don't actually see Blockbench within here. And that is because Blockbench is a web application. It is simulated on your phone if you have it within quotation marks installed, but it's actually not installed on your device. So let's jump into Blockbench once more. And this is now where we're going to be able to change and edit the file. But let's finish off the Entity Wizard setup. You'll notice as we get to this step that it actually says to us that we cannot actually edit the files from within here. We need to open them up from somewhere else. And we've just gone through all of those steps leading up to this. So continue isn't going to give us anything. I'm going to cancel and then also discard these changes. Now inside of file, I'm going to go into open model and then browse my phone for the entity setup within the test MC add-on.zip. The thing we need to do with the .zip archive is to actually extract it into an open archive. That way we can edit these folders and files. And this is also where we need to take the files from later where we want to put them inside of Minecraft. So let's extract an archive name here. So what you'll notice here is that we get the test.mc add-on and it's just a regular folder system. Within here we find the same folders as we did before. We have test behavior and test resources. Inside of test behavior we find the same files and inside of test resources we will also find the same files. Here like I said before you find the pack icon. You can change this B up here to be whatever you want it to be. Same thing within the test resources you also find the B down here. So you can change it up and make that your own icon. But now we want to edit our actual model file and that is found within the models folder. And inside of here there is the folder called entity and here is our test.gl.json. But we cannot edit it from here because we just open it with the zip archive setup. So 
we'll have to go back into Blockbench once more by simply tapping ourselves to the other menus. Then up to File to open the file with Open Model. By clicking Open Model, we do get access to browsing our files on our phone, and as you will see, we get to test.mc add-on right there. Then open up the resource pack, go back into Models, Entity, and then click on our test.io.json. Now we can actually see the model here, and we choose to import what parts of this model we want to have, and I'm going to input all of it this way. And I'm also going to bring in the texture from the resource pack by going down to Textures, click on Import Texture, Files, and then go back outside to the resource pack again to go into the Textures folder of the resource pack, Entity, and then click on our Test Entity. Now that's added to our model, as you can see here. Nice, we got all of that working. Let's take a look at the animations of this model. You can see also we have access to the Paint tab, for example, which will allow us to paint on our model. And we also have the Animate tab, which allows us to animate the model. If we go down at the bottom, you'll see that we have the Animation Browser, which you're going to click. And there you see we can either create a new animation with a button to the left, like this. Now let's just delete it because we don't want to make a new one. We want to import the previous ones. So we click on the button next to it, Import Animation, go back to Files. Browse for these files by going all the way back out to the folder called Animations. Click on Test Animations and bring in the animations from our mob. Click Confirm. Now these ones are finally within our model setup. And now we can actually edit and change things around the way we want it to be. And I did this in a previous video, which you can check out here on the channel, where I just make this little guy and I'll show you how to go about animating and modeling in your phone. I wasn't super much a fan of this, and I will probably not make more phone related videos for the future, but it was a fun test. And I hope that this video is going to give you some more information. But now when all of that is done, let's go into test behavior and copy that file folder. We are going to bring that all the way into new folder. If you go down to games, you will notice that we find a com.moja. This is where your files are located on your phone. We want to put this inside of our development behavior packs and paste it in. Now do the same thing for our resource pack. Take tested resources, copy that file folder and bring it in to the same setup, com.mojang, and now into our development resource packs. Paste it and done. We should be able to open this inside of our game. But by default, Minecraft on your phone device does not actually have the correct setup to allow you to access these packages. The way you'll have to do that is by turning on a certain setting when you create your new world. So I'm going to create a new world here. I'm going to go down into my behavior pack and activate our new custom resources because they are available to us. The only problem is that we will not be able to access them within the game without going into the game settings and changing the little thing up. So inside of game settings, we'll go all the way down to here and activate where it says enable game test framework. This is crucial to get access to any of your custom made behavior or resource packs. So with this now set in, we don't really need to think about anything else. As you'll see me here, I'm activating activate cheats because I forgot to activate creative mode further up and I will go back to creative mode because we still need that to summon the thing in. But this is also my last tutorial on how to work with your phone. So I wanted to check out the resources I provided below. Bedrock.dev is fantastic. You want to learn more about how to work with the game and know this, there will be a lot of coding up ahead. Now, before we do anything else, let's just check if everything is sticked in and then we're going to go into creating our world. As Minecraft now generates, we will be able to take a look at this custom mob we added inside of the game using the Entity Wizard setup, but as we also showed, you will need to move the files and folders in between. So let's open up our browsing menu to find the spawn eggs. And inside of the spawn eggs menu, you will now notice that when we open it up and scroll down, our custom egg is indeed down to the bottom left, called Spawn Test. We're going to be placing that in Hotbar and this should summon a creeper. And indeed it does. This is pretty nice, right? And if you now want to edit this creeper model, like I showed you before, you would go in through the file browser system and open up from within inside of Blockbench. And only from within inside of Blockbench will you be able to access these files. So you will need to get an application that can handle archives, unzip them and so forth. You will need Blockbench on your phone device, which you can find over at blockbench.net. And if you want to learn more about how you can use Blockbench and get inspired to create more creations for Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Pocket Edition, then do check out this tutorial series I have 
right here. Leave a like and subscribe and also check out the community discord and our live streams over at twitch.tv slash artsbykev.